And with that, we have literally scratched the surface. You know, you know that, that one picture, it's a meme, right? Where you see like the tip of the iceberg, then you go underwater and that's a whole big thing. We're submerging now. And we're going to talk to Dr. Ron McNinch, who, is, who has forgotten more about Guam politics than most of us will ever know. So, Doc, always a pleasure. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you so much. It has Very been good. far too long. First yeah. of all, COVID. Yeah. You know. How have you been? I mean, I know, I know you're Great. always involved in, you know, in uh, civic events, in community activities and everything like that. But what have you been up to? Keeping busy. We're doing a lot of fun things up in Saipan and, and in Palau. We're, we're having some really neat regional development and we're having a great time. And uh, Excellent. I've been keeping pretty busy on things. So. Okay. Well, you know, we, we I'm sure, are going to keep you busy as, you know, we, t <laughs> we tap your expertise about the election. Um, you know, the big news yesterday, of course, I'm sure you watched the live stream as most people did. Uh, Michael Nicholas came out uh, with two of, the, two of his lawyers in Zoom at the same time addressing the outcome of the uh, House ethics um, investigation against him. Does this have any bearing on his bid for governor um, strategically, impact-wise, public relations perception of him going forward? Sure. Uh, really, in my view, this is a matter of timing. So if we go back to what has happened in the past, mm -hmm. when we have had leaders or candidates who uh, or either uh, suspected of indictment or under indictment, the timing of that particular indictment or of that particular announcement that they're going to be prosecuted really matters a lot. Mm -hmm. And so the big question now for uh, St. Nicholas is, are, is the Justice Department going to move forward with it or not? And whether it does or not really matters a lot. And then the, the second question is, if they are going to move forward with it, in conjunction to the election, at what point are they going to announce that they're going to do it? Mm -hmm. And because the point that they announce that they're going to do it, if they do it, really affects how people will vote. Now, you or I cannot say if the DOJ, like w what they're going to decide one way or the other, because, you know, we don't belong to that organization. But I would say if you were to intuit and use, you know, your expertise and everything, where do you think they would land? <clears throat> When they indicted uh, Governor Verdalio, they mm -hmm. indicted him right before the election. And so that was, you know, it, so it had major election impact mm -hmm. in, in the election cycle. So that's just one example. And that was, of course, back in, in the 1980s. Uh, there have been other uh, members of Congress that have been prosecuted. And, and, and this is not a totally unusual instance when a person in the Congress is indicted or, or even convicted mm -hmm. of, of things. And so this isn't something that's unheard of. Even uh, uh, I think Dan Rostenkowski, who was one of the top leaders in the U.S. Congress, was an, indicted and convicted over, over uh, what was called franking or uh, uh, postage stamp fraud. Mm -hmm. And so there are all kinds of examples of, of, of these kinds of cases that come out. But at this point, we just don't know. We mm -hmm. don't know. Uh, whether it, this is political rhetoric coming out of this committee, whether the Biden administration will follow through with it, we just don't know at this point. Mm -hmm. Now, public relations, you know, like again, per, uh, like, a, you know, perception, rose-colored glasses, you know, what, however you want to frame the argument. Uh, what happens to the strength of his candidacy or even the candidacy, you know, in its existence? Should he actually, should the DOJ actually pursue uh, like a case against him? I think that's the critical, the critical question mm -hmm. is, is if the DOJ announces that they're going to be doing these things uh, before people vote, then it's going to have a voting impact. Of course it is. But if, if, if it's not, then it's, it's really just a subject for, you know, a, a matter of politics for uh, St. Nicholas's opponents to use it in, in whatever way they want and, and whatever, to whatever advantage they seek. And on the other hand, uh, St. Nicholas can then argue, hey, you know, People are just hating on me because I'm me. And so mm -hmm. there's, there's all kinds of angles on this. Would he be an obligated in any way as far as, like, you know, the mechanics of being a candidate? Or would, he, uh, would his candidacy therefore be null and void? Or? You know, it's interesting. Uh, for the Guam legislature, you cannot have a felony conviction and run for the Guam legislature. Right. But you can have a felony conviction and run for governor. Mm. So the, the standards are a little bit different. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I want to shift focus uh, real quick, Ron, because, uh, you know, of course, we led the show with the news about uh, the overturning of the Roe versus Wade right. landmark decision. You know, it's a half century ago. Um, how does that and the, the tidal wave of emotion and, and, of, uh, and of community reaction and societal impact, 
that has happened in the states? How does that filter down to us, and does it have any bearing on our local election? Well, it's very interesting. This is how we follow this, is we, we, we track language here according to national talking points. And so what we found is that, that there are leaders here or people vocal about the subject here who are trying to follow the national talking points. Mm -hmm. And they're talking as if we fit into that national policy sphere, and we do not. Uh, the society here is different, our people here are different. Uh, people have very different uh, feelings about these things and they have about them nationally. Uh, Guam, on average, uh, in the United States, 60 women per 1,000, ages 15 to 44, have a baby in any given year, 60 per 1,000. On Guam, it's 142. So there are babies crawling all over the place here. <laughs> and so these, this talk about you know abortion and babies and stuff, it just doesn't ring the way that a lot of the folks that are visibly upset about this, it doesn't ring with them in the, in, 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 with the public in the same ways. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean that, that it's not, they don't have a right to talk about it or advocate for it, but in general, what the US Supreme Court said was very simple. This is an issue for the legislatures to decide and for the, for the state and territorial jurisdictions to decide. And you know, nobody reads the Roe versus Wade case. Nobody really reads that 21 page decision. Mm -hmm. It's very informative. They even provided model legislation. I didn't realize it was that terse. It's only 21 pages. 21 pages. And then there's- You hear, you hear about it and the way right. people speak with reverence about it as a document, you think it's like, you know, the size of the Bible. Right, and the Dobbs decision by contrast was 210 pages. So exactly, you know, this is how much it's mushroomed since then. But but actually, uh, in the in, in Byron White, who was a Kennedy, President Kennedy's appointee, basically said, you know, the court shouldn't be legislating uh, on these kinds of questions. We should leave it to the states, and that's where it belongs. Mm -hmm. And that was his dissent. And I think that that there's something to that. But here's the key thing. Uh, Anyone who's upset about this decision and thinks it affects them, it's, it now means that it's a matter for the voters to decide. Mm -hmm. And let's see what the voters say. Okay, so uh, final question, Ron. What words of wisdom or even like speculative thoughts can you give to, I mean, there's several newcomers running, uh, specifically in the legislative race. What should they be thinking about like right now? You know, with, with the uh, tense geopolitical state of the world, even here, like at home, you know, thing, things are constantly like in flux. People want impact and they want it right now. You know, the, the young voters and everything, they're an incredibly highly opinionated demographic. You know, what does it take to get them out and everything? So what should be the strategy of someone who has never run for public office before? Well, this race, there's a whole bunch of open seats. That normally doesn't happen as, as widely as it has happened uh, in this particular election. Not only are there open seats, there are people who are abandoning their seats and not even seeking other office. They're just giving up and walking away from the legislature. So that's, cre that's gonna create a neat potential opportunity for new faces. And there's a formula to run for the legislature on Guam. There's a, a specific formula. Just putting your name on the ballot doesn't get you elected. You have to, to pay your dues. You have to do hard work to get elected. You have to talk and then do. If you're already in office, you have to do things mm -hmm. that then ring with people. And so I, I, it's going to be a very interesting race in that regard. And is it harder to get reelected than it is to get elected for no, the first time? No, it's far easier to get reelected. Mm, okay. In, fa in fact, uh, there's a... The benefits of incumbency. Oh, is. absolutely. Yeah. Because you have earned media. That is, any, any elected leader can come up with a bill and you can interview them for TV the next day. Good point. So... Okay, so that's Dr. Ron McNinch, of course, at the University of Guam. We are very, very pleased just to have, be able to sit... <laughs> in the same in the same studio we hope you you like what we've done with the place we oh, changed wonderful. things up a little bit no, put a couple it. coats of paint here so uh make yourself at home because Thank we you. know we're going to be talking to you throughout the election season and now remember everybody we are going to have wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the decision 22 election season now that it is upon us right here on the hot spot with candidate conversations tuesdays and thursdays beginning on the fifth and then the hub with my good buddy nestor lacanto who will have political analysts beginning friday the eighth and the hotspot has a new time remember we've been running that commercial during the commercial breaks. So starting next Tuesday, we'll see you guys at 11. And please stay tuned everybody because when the hotspot returns, we are gonna head live downtown to see our friends at the Boca Box and see what they have for us.